In 2009 and 2010, Jose Mourinho managed one of the most disciplined teams ever grace the European stage. The pragmatic Portuguese manager went on to win the league, UEFA Champions League and the Italian Cup in the year 2010 and Inter Milan has been the one team that has or the one Italian team that has been able to do the treble. And in this video we're going to look at Jose Mourinho's tactic in 2009-2010 that went on to win the treble and nullify the might of Football Club Barcelona and Pep Guardiola and Lionel Messi in the semi-final of the Champions League. I've replicated the tactic here to some extent but for the sake of this video I'm going to create a new tactic where we're going to unlock everybody or go through all the player rules player instructions and see how the tactic ties up together and how Jose Mourinho was able to get this team to play the way he wanted them to play in 2010. The first thing we need to understand is the squad that Jose Mourinho had at the time at Inter Milan. So the goalkeeper was Julio Cesar. He played as a standard goalkeeper for most of the season. Now Jose's team were known to be pragmatic, very defensive, very solid and hard to break down but that is let's say in the Champions League right when they were in the league they weren't as defensive as most teams think they were they were quite balanced in the way they went about their business and starting from the fullback starting from the defenders your two central defenders or the two central defenders were Walter Samael at left center back and Lucio as the right center back you had Maicon as a flying wing back on the right back position and then Javier Zanetti was a slightly more defensive fullback playing in the left back position in the midfield, there was a diamond. Esteban Combiaso played in the DM role often, and then Dejan Stankovic usually played in the central midfield role. We're going to get to the detailed player roles much later in the video. And then you'd have Thiago Mota playing as the other central midfielder. Actually, Thiago Mota was on the left hand side, and then Dejan Stankovic played on the right hand side. And then the most important role that I have, let me say, one of the most important roles in this tactic was the number 10 role in Wesley Schneider, where he played as one of the most powerful central attacking midfielders at the time number 10 he could run up and down the field get left and right shoot from outside the box create chances run at the defense he did everything and then in attack you had a Samuel Eto you had Samuel Eto on the left hand side and then you had Diego Milito playing as the right hand side striker now the alternative to this 4-2-2 diamond system was a 4-2-3-1 system where the let's say Samuel Eto for example was going to play as the inside forward on the right hand side yep inside four on the right hand side and then Diego Bilito will play alone as a center forward and then Cambiaso obviously is going to shift into the central midfield position and then you had Goran Pandev play as the left sided winger so that way Inter Milan were able to actually have numbers up front and this was their alternative philosophy or their alternative shape from the diamond. As I mentioned before, Julio Cesar played often as a standard goalkeeper on defend duty and then in the left back position, Javier Zanetti rarely got forward. So his role was to actually stay in the deeper role and try to form a sort of back three with the central defenders on the or during defensive phases so essentially wing back are going to be on defended because there was nobody on this other flank here and then Mykon on the other hand was actually more adventurous the if the fact that Mykon played as a wing back on attack duty but not just a wing back on attack he was responsible for creating chances and playing through balls also crossing the ball high and wide so he was essentially playing as a wing back on support duty including the get further forward instruction cross on the byline instruction and take more risk instruction attached to his so essentially he was playing both roles at once so that's why i'm going to include him as a wing back on support duty and often in different sense you're going to also see where he played as a wing back on attack duty but the way i opted for the support duty was to also make him a bit more versatile and then have him play those through balls because on attack duty i don't think you're going to really really try to play those through balls so take more risks and then cross on the byline that's actually what worked for playing as Mykon, you know, on the wing back on support duty. Cambiasio was the defensive midfielder here. Usually support or defend didn't really make much difference. He used to get forward once in a while. But the way the system was designed was just to try and protect the defense as much as possible. Get as many players back to try and defend and stop the goal. So a defensive midfielder on, on defend duty was actually a very good role selected in this region. And then in the central midfield, Dejan Stankovic on the right hand side was more of a flying player. He used to get box to box, try to attack both the or try to influence the game in an attacking manner and in a defensive manner as well. So a box to box um box to box midfielder role was also a very good selection there. And then the Thiago Mota on the other hand 
played as a traditional central midfielder on support on support duty he would obviously try to link up with schneider link up with stankovic and help out defensively as well so a standard central midfielder on support dt with nothing too fancy attached so he was also responsible for trying to close people down but i noticed that the way the team tactic was set up there wasn't too much closing down selected for this tactic so the team was probably holding onto their ship a lot more than trying to force a turnover schneider on the other hand was playing everything in this role we know that wesley schneider was shooting a lot more taking more risk roaming from his positions he was everywhere and nowhere at the same time so it was difficult for the defenders to actually pick him difficult for the defenders to actually try to mark him he was also good at bringing the ball out of the defense and running at the opposition's defense so dribble more instruction was equal was equally selected for this player and then the fact that he wasn't traditionally an attacking outlet for the team made me select a support role for the striker and including all those other instructions for both strikers samuel eto played as a complete forward on attack duty and the reason why i'm choosing the complete forward because this is the one role that i've seen that is able to drift into the wide areas and try to sometimes cross the ball for a strike partner diego milito on the other hand played as a center forward so advanced forward would go well but if you wanted him to press a lot more he could actually go for the pressing forward but in this case i opted for the advanced forward on attack duty and that's kind of how I went about building the shape for this tactic. For the team instruction, I kept the mid block and the pressing wasn't really also changed as well. So everything was kind of the same in this region, nothing really fancy. But then in transition, the team was expected to regroup when the possession was lost and try to fall back as quickly as possible and stop the opposition from completing the counter attack but and in, in an event where we actually went on to win possession the instruction was to counter the opposition and distribute the ball quickly as quickly as possible often you can actually turn this off if you want but the main emphasis was when you win the ball in your defensive third you just go and hit your position on the counter attack and try to score goals as quickly as possible so in possession then the team played with i think i left everything on standard basically no playing out of defense because we weren't trying to build anything from the back more discipline so that kind of locked the team's creative freedom to try and allow them to be a more robust unit making it more difficult for the opposition to break down and then well approach play you can see the pass into space instruction although this did this did cause some loss of possession but it was actually useful when you're trying to counter it you know hit the opposition on the counter attack it helped you actually move the ball quickly into the opposition's final third so i did go on to like i mentioned i did go on to create the tactic that's just the explanation of how to how let me say my thought process is replicating that tactic and then you can see here basically balance be more disciplined counter and regroup mid block basically that's the entire tactic wing back on defend wing back on support duty and then standard goalkeeper and then in the fall 2 3 one system the main change that i made was to put snyder, um, snyder like i mentioned on attack on support duty inside four for somewhere later on this other role and then the way everything the back four was pretty much the same tiago mota played as a central midfielder on defend dt and then you have stankovic playing as the box to box midfielder and then goran pandev playing as the winger on support duty on the left hand side the tempo here was slightly higher because you had to actually move the ball a lot quicker and try to counter as quickly as possible so that's why i went on to include those instructions here but for the out of possession instruction in the 4231 system we had a low block this time and then the crossing the trigger press was much less to try and cause the team to sit in their shape more and be more disciplined and more difficult to break down we will go on to test out this tactic in a few games especially the important ones like juventus that's going to be an interesting one so we're going to see how the tactic works out in that game so we've seen the history behind jose marino's treble winning tactic we've seen the philosophy we've created the system on football manager and we've even gone on to test it out in a few games just you know mid-table side brianza bologna i think this is a lower side these are teams that were expected to beat anyway so the big test comes when we have liverpool juventus and fc Bayern munich so this is where we're going to test out the tactic in game and see how the system works and if we can get one over on liverpool juve and Bayern. now the pre-game tactic Tactical advice is quite important. Looking at the two players that I'm going to select here, okay, I'm going to not pay too much attention to that. I know who I want to start the game, and Jekyll is probably going to be on the bench. Looking at the opposition instruction, this is where it's quite important as well. I need to go into the opposition instructions. Okay, we can find that here. Lukaku is currently injured, so I'm forced to start with Eddie Jekyll eventually as the complete forward. So I'm going to just find a way to bring him in there and back again opposition instruction. This is the part that is really, really important. Fabino is one player that I'm forced to trigger press, and because of the way this tactic is set up that we're trying to not force our or to, we're not trying to impose ourselves on the opposition a lot having the trigger press set to fabino is quite good because that way liverpool can actually go and play the ball to him and they're actually going to pass their way out to defense a bit before we can go on to that trigger pressing them i mean look at my team instructions 
quickly at the overview now you can see that trigger press is set to just standard mid block standard everything is pretty standard so the team is not going to try to force anything so kick off then balls out wide to dump freeze i'm kind of nervous because i don't have any i'm not forcing any instructions which is something i'm not very comfortable with doing in football manager but because of marina's philosophy i kind of like the system that is so bare and it's so simple so let's see how the tactic goes on to work for us in this big game against liverpool there's a ball out wide to fabinho Mkhitaryan is closed out Salah. This is when they start to play out from the back and Virgil van Dijk is allowed to dwell on the ball before he's sent to Robertson out wide. So they're trying to avoid Fabinho because there's somebody, you know, there's somebody close to Fabinho and there's ball, two of them in on him and then he's forced to pass the ball out to Kanati again. So you can see our shape in defense. Nobody's trying anything too stupid or so just forcing them out wide. There's one, um, Mkhitaryan has one possession. We can start on the counter attack. Now Liverpool sort of get into shape really quickly. Here's Guzens. Passed it back to Bastoni. He's actually spending a lot of time on the ball. Make a turn to. Ah, oh, it's just been caught. Lataro Martinez. Looking at the stats so far, we're doing quite well. Liverpool hasn't had a shot on target so far, and we've had three and five shots, but we're yet to score a goal. And also, we're at home, so I kind of, you know, I enjoy that fact that <laughs> the fact that we have the home team on our side in this case. So, half an hour gone so far, 33 minutes in, no goals. We do have most of the. What's. What's this called again? <laughs> match dominance. I'm going to call it match dominance. Oh, oh my God. We're conceding a penalty. Holy crap. And Salah against it probably. Oh my goodness. We've been doing so well. Oh, save by Onana. Hey, <laughs> we're doing quite well. We're doing quite well. Ah, God D. Oh, that's Mataro Martinez. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait to see the replay of this one. Straight from the throwing as well. Oh, come on, ref. Oh no! For our half time, we've been good, so we need to be careful about how we go, how we approach our half time team talk. So hands together, or pointing at my fingers on my player, and then that didn't have any effect. <laughs> so second half, let's see how well we do for this time. Fabino, Kunate has it. We're actually keeping Liverpool at bay in this one. So blocked by screening i like that we have so many players up back here's a chance for the counter attack mkhitaryan is stopped and he's playing the schneider role so the moment he's in possession he starts to run at the defense and i like that he also has the chance to shoot often so here's the ball out wide to salah out to bastoni has been blocked brozovic long ball to lataro martinez oh that's wonderful open your eye open your eye come on just square the ball out to zeko I'm not tweaking anything tactically. I'm not. These players are going to play the way they're supposed to play. It's Kalanoglu. Mkhitaryan up wide, mopping up possession. Oh, Zeko couldn't get there. Brozovic. We, we're just winning every second ball. I love the control that this tactic gives my team. Guzens. Oh, Guzens has lost possession. Salah. Good defending. <laughs> Very good defending. <laughs> oh, I wish my normal players in other saves could defend like this. Inter Milan are doing quite well here. So much space at the back, but good covering. Great covering. Ah, oh, Luis Diaz out to Salah. Great covering. Zeko couldn't win the first header. How? How? I'm, I can't believe I miss Lukaku right now. <laughs> I can't believe I miss Lukaku. Come on. They're actually finding a lot of room in Salah's wing. The fact that I have Guzens on defend duty has helped us so much. So Robertson is off. For Simikas, Simikas blocked by Mkhitaryan. He's playing it back and there's nobody, there's nobody as an outlet. I'm looking to increase the tempo right now to force my players to cross the ball a lot more and just increase the tempo to slightly higher. The counter and the group are just fine. We're doing quite well in our defensive transitions. And out of possession, I think I like the way everything is right now. Liverpool aren't too... You can't really force the press at this moment. I think we're doing fine trying to trigger press them the way we are. So we're going to try to see what that brings. Playing with a higher tempo and, you know, asking the team to cross the ball because Jekko is in there and we're not giving the ball to him. So that's not very good. 75 minutes has gone so far. We should just take off Zeko right now. <laughs> right now, I think Zeko is going. He's already tired. Ah, oh, come on. Jacqueline Correa is a lot faster. So even more tempo can actually help us in this case. Runner defense won't be necessary. I'm not trying to force it. Here's Dumfries out for Matteo Damian. It's between him and the Ambrosio, and I'm choosing Damian for this one. So let's see where that takes us. Two changes made so far. 
I haven't tweaked the system in any way, just made a few tweaks. And Liverpool are actually forced to play with the diamond as well. <laughs> I think they've got a player sent off. Okay, Trent is injured and they have no replacement for him. So, goalless it seems. Goalless draw. How often do you see that in Football Manager? Well, we did see it today. It's a game that, well, to some extent, it could have gone either way, really. But we somehow managed to hold Liverpool. And then the next bit is the big game against Juventus. We're going to see how that game turns out as well. I'm going with a similar lineup for the Juventus game. Just the one difference is that Correa is in for Edin Dzeko this time for that pace. Out wide to Danilo, Quadrado has it, tries to square into Bastoni, here's Guzens. Back to Onana. Out to Skriniar, out to Dumfries. Skriniar again, Brozovic, good passing, very good passing. Ah, lovely ball to Lataro Martinez. <laughs> He's been closed out too easily. He's been closed out too easily. But he's a good outlet though. I like the fact that Martinez always has space. Kind of the way we play buys him some time to run into the opposition's defense and the pace he has as well. Here's Bastoni. Out to screen here. Very good control. Kalanoglu. Bastoni again. Out to Kalanoglu. Long ball into Lataro Martinez. He's been closed out again. Correa has it this time. Doing much better than Jekyll. Through ball. Oh, lovely. Saved by Perron. Dumfries, long ball in, cleared away. Di Maria is there. Out to Benucci, now Locatelli. And they're already off on the counter attack. Look at Blahovic. oh my god, can somebody stop him? Can somebody stop him, please? Okay, Locatelli, cleared away. Very good defending. We get a lot of numbers back just before the opposition tries to start anything there. We have three, four, five players in the opposition, in our defense, trying to stop the opposition from scoring. So as much as we're doing fairly good in attack, defensively we're quite good and I like that. Blavich out to Dumfries again, Brozovic has it, Mkhitaryan, Lataro, Martinez! There we go, 1-0, Inter Milan. Are they still called Inter Milan? <laughs> Inter Nacional, whatever, 1-0. So hopefully more goals now will be quicker. Here's Lataro, Martinez out to Dumfries. To Bro Brozovic, good ball, Mkhitaryan, lovely touch. And Lataro, Martinez just slots it home. 1-0. So on key highlights now, I do expect more goals, but it's also the fact that I can't really see what the opposition is doing all the time. It's why I like extended highlights, but extended highlights, they're too long. Here's Cordrado, he has possession. What can he do with it? Block, Rabio has it. Danilo, close him down, please. Somebody close him down. Paradise, Rabio. Ooh, that was close. I need to encourage my team more now and be on top, be more proactive because we're on key highlights now, no longer extended highlights. So I need to be really aware of everything that is going on. Barella has gotten himself booked, so we need to be wary of him. And we need to motivate the team a lot more during the second half. Okay, we're already in there. Back to the dressing, what do you call it? The dressing room. Let's see, let's go, let's go, let's go. Try and inspire my team. We're controlling the game, we're doing quite well. Everybody's happy, quick, simple game. Let's go. Hopefully Juventus is not going to wake up. We still have them at 0.17 xG, so they are not doing so well trying to create a chance. I think the regroup instruction allows enough players to get behind the ball and try to stop the opposition from scoring. So I've learned something new in Football Manager working on this Jose Marino's tactic. 70 minutes in, no chances. Here's Bonucci out wide. Here we are. I'm scared already. I'm shitting. Oh, come on. Not another penalty, ref. Come on. You can't keep giving these people penalties. I don't like it. I don't. Nobody does. Penalty awarded. Ah, oh, we're doing so well until... Boom. Penalty. Blahovic. Oh, slotted home. 1-1. One, one. I'm not liking this. Ah, not a bad day at the office, but not a good one as well. We ended up drawing the game 1 1, but Juve is a big team. We've got a point and we can move on. We've conceded our first goal of the league season against Juventus, and Liverpool didn't score against us. We're still in fourth. And that, to my knowledge, has been a way to replicate Jose Marina's diamond system from the treble winning year and also the 4 2 3 1 system that was alternative tactic to the diamond tactic. He used the 4 2 3 1 a lot more in the Champions League. And then he used the diamond system more often than not in the league. This was probably the main tactic. The diamond system was the main system that they used in 2010. 
with Milito and Samuel Eto as the other striker and he was able to get Jose Mourinho very good results in that year. Not so much now, the tactic or football itself has changed a lot so it's going to be very difficult to get this tactic to win you the treble in any division. So. It's a simple approach to go with and defensively if you want to stop the opposition from scoring so many goals or having so many chances to score goals from trying to nullify them and maybe lock them down to set pieces or something like that this is the kind of good setup you can go for forcing your team to regroup a lot more instead of just counter pressing all the time you can help you can help you get players back and defend your own goal effectively if you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like on it and also to subscribe to the channel for more football manager tactic texting videos like this i'm working on recreating vincent company's tactic at burnley that video is going to come up real soon immediately after this one feel free to hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when more football manager tactic videos do come out thanks for watching thanks for all the support to the channel i'll see you in the next video